I'm here at Telecom World 2012 in Dubai and I'm very pleased to be joined by Eugene Kaspersky, who is CEO and founder of Kaspersky Lab. Eugene, thank you very much for being with us today. Yeah, welcome. And uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you. And uh, it's, uh, I'm really proud to be here at such a great event, and especially in times of the uh, changing landscape of cyber threats. I was going to ask you about that. There's been a, a great deal of transformation in, in the ICT industry. I wanted to ask you about the changes in the landscape in cybersecurity and, and also with regards to the level of threats that we, we might experience. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we, well, we see that uh, the uh, landscape of the threats, the IT threats, is being changed, uh, and uh, unfortunately, it's uh, going on quite quickly. So it started just about 20 years ago with uh, quite a primitive computer viruses, which were written by, mostly by kids, uh, teenagers, which were just they were proving themselves in their IT world uh, with uh, quite a primitive computer viruses. Uh, kids don't write viruses anymore; they play computer games. So they were replaced with uh, uh, criminals, uh, which were developing malware and cyber threats, uh, just because of their financial reasons and still they, they do quite a lot and then the uh, cyber crime transformed to the organized crime so uh, I don't want to say mafia no it's a little bit different traditional crime and cyber crime they have a distance in between uh, but uh, cyber crime now it's economy it's a different uh, well organizations gangs individuals which are connected uh, so it's a, it's a very big economy but uh, it's not the end of the story. The hacktivists came to this area, and unfortunately, the hacktivists are one of the one of the most serious problems in the IT security. And now we are we see that there are more and more attacks, which we can call cyber sabotage, attacks on industrial systems, attacks on uh, critical IT infrastructure, um, attacks on the uh, internet itself. Well, in some, you know, the cases of uh, Estonia, and that happened once uh, with South Korea in 2003, then the whole the country was disconnected from the internet. So unfortunately, it came from the kids' toys to, to, well, there's still no definition of cyber terrorism. But as I understand it, it's very, very, very close to cyber terrorism. And what about the worst case scenarios? What, what, uh, what could we uh, be m m most afraid of, do you think? I'm very right man to ask this question because I'm thinking about the worst case scenarios all the time. And uh, I'm afraid the situation is very, very serious because we depend on IT. Computers, they are, they're, they're everywhere. Do you know how many computers you use in your well, daily life? It's like when you drive your car, when you go to the hotel, well, I'm staying in the hotel at the moment, so you go to the hotel, press there, they call the elevator, so which elevator comes first? It's computer system as well. Um, planes, transportation, um, power grid. So this world is managed by computers. And it's getting more and more close to matrix. <laughs> so. We depend on computer systems. They are everywhere. Unfortunately, the systems are vulnerable. And we had already we had uh, examples of uh, critical attacks, like uh, attack on Estonia. The whole country was disconnected. Stuxnet, attack on the SCADA system. Uh, Aramco, attack on the critical IT infrastructure. So I think these three scenarios are the worst case scenarios. Attack on industrial systems, including transportation, power plants, what else? attacks on the critical IT infrastructure and attacks on the networks, internet, mobile networks, maybe some very specific networks which we even don't know about. Uh, these three uh, scenarios are maybe the worst case scenarios and unfortunately there, are, there could be their collateral damage, so the random victims because it's, it's internet, no borders, no distance, well no time, so you press button here and there are somewhere far, 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 far away where you, there are thousand computers are dead. IT systems, they are very similar. So it's the same operating systems, it's the same industrial environment, the same networks. So there could be random infections. The result of such an attack, I'm afraid the successful professional global IT attack could, it could but I think it easily can get us back to the pre-electric time. I call it romantic scenario. Candles, horses, uh, paper printed emails, <laughs> handwritten 
Right. <laughs> so, very briefly, how can economies achieve digital resilience in this in this hyper-connected world? Um, well, there are some ideas. There are ways how to make this world more safe, more secure. And uh, there are good news and bad news at the same time. So there are ways how to make it. Um, there are technologies. There are uh, products which are almost ready, uh, which can protect industrial system, for example. Uh, there are IT strategy how to make your network, if we're talking about critical IT infrastructure, to make the network more stable and to have a backup network, maybe in some cases, because well, if, if the main network is broken, so we have to switch to the, to the second one. Uh, talking about the uh, network attacks on internet or mobile system, there are some technologies, there are some ideas how to make it, to have it protected, but it's uh, just one side of uh, this issue. I think that uh, the second part of the solution is uh, international cooperation, it's an uh, agreement between governments not to use cyber weapons. Also agreement to investigate incidents, because if there are states behind the attacks, it's possible to agree not to use it anymore. But if there are activists, or traditional terrorists behind the attacks. I'm afraid it's very difficult to talk to them. So there have to be a cooperation between different governments, between states and regions to investigate, to find who is behind it, and better to find it before the attack. So that's a, uh, the good news is that we have uh, ideas and we have partly solutions. Partly we have solutions. Uh, the bad news is that the IT systems, they're everywhere. There are cameras here, the computers as well. Everyone has a computer in the pocket, maybe two computers in the pocket. How many computers in the cars? It's everywhere. So the bad news is that to redesign computer system in a secure way, it's, it's damn complicated and expensive. If we say that, okay, we have a plan that within five or 10 years, we have to rebuild, redesign all the computer stuff in a secure way. The IT security engineers, the software engineers, will be paid as a football football stars, because it's not enough. There are not enough of people to well redo all the work which was done within the last 20, 30, 50 years, <laughs> because computers are everywhere. So uh, I am paranoid and optimistic at the same time. I am paranoid because all the time I'm thinking about worst case scenarios. I am optimistic uh, because there are solutions, there are strategies how to make this world more safe, more secure. And I'm double happy because I'm working in IT security industry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I understand. And finally, we're here at ITU Telecom World 2012. Why, why do you think this event is important? Well, uh, talking about the, the IT uh, innovations about IT development uh, from the uh, corner of cybersecurity, because I, I'm sitting in the corner of cybersecurity, I'm watching the world from there. I think this, uh, this event is extremely important uh, because there are more and more people, uh, governments, uh, businesses, enterprises, they understand IT security issues on a very, very, very high level. Um, no surprise that uh, presidents, prime ministers, they're talking about cyber threats. That's why for me, for my company, for my business, and, and, and for me personally, it's, uh, this event is extremely important uh, because this is one more opportunity to just to share my ideas, to share my paranoia, uh, to explain the worst case scenarios and uh, to find the right partners, how to make this world more safe, more secure, and have to, have to, have to save the cyber world. Uh, which is a uh, mission of my company, my personal mission. Eugene Kaspersky, thank you very much for being with us today.